Hello and welcome to Amsterdam and this video which is my most anticipated Essen games for 2018. There's a lot of them. So to prepare for this list I went ahead and filtered out any games that I already owned. There's another video that you can go and watch that talks about the games that I already own that I would buy again <laughs> if I didn't already own them so you can watch those. And in addition, I count out any games that you can't purchase and I take off any expansions. So these are only standalone games that are available for sale at Essen. And for most of these, actually every single game on this list, I have read the rules for. Um, I have read the rules on so many games. The Essen preview list by BGG, um, Eric Martin puts it together, was 1,100 games. Um, and it's, they, he's still adding them every day. So there's a lot to filter through. I probably have missed something. I did the best I could, but these are the games that are most interesting to me. Number 19, cause yeah, I guess there's 19 games on this list, would be Wang Du. Wang Du is a, hmm, it's a strategy game where you are trying to complete your player board. So there are eight empty token slots on your player board. You need one of each type of token, technically, there's only four types of tokens, but anyway, you need eight tokens of specific types to fill in your board. First player to do so will end the game and potentially win the game. And the way that you gain these tokens is you have these little bear statues and you put them on the board depending on certain placement rules and restrictions to gain the tiles. So yeah, it's like an abstract strategy game, but it looks really straightforward and very compelling and like something that people would want to touch. And so I think this game would work really well for like a my casual or mid-game family. So yeah, it looks interesting and engaging. Wing do. Number 18 is Layers. This is a real-time puzzle game. So basically somebody made a game out of game board punch boards, the sprues. And so what happens is there's a card that's flipped. Every player has a bunch of like the punch board sprues. There's planes flying over this park constantly. Um, and you have to layer your punch board sprues to make the pattern on the card. And I think it's just so interesting and unique. And it's, it's somebody made a game out of punch board sprues and it makes me really excited. So I'm excited to play that one, which is Layers. Ahayalda Juda, Brazil. Ah, uh, say it again. Ahayalda Juda, uh. Brazil. Ahayalda Juda, Brazil. Aharalia, Arahalia. No. Arahalia. Uh, Ar Juda. Ahayal. Is my number seventeen. It's from uh, Brazilian designers. Nuno and Paolo, um, they've done a lot of more heavyweight games and this game is a lot lighter and this is Tetris, it's Tetris the game. There's polynomials and they will fall and they represent like people at a block party and you're trying to get them to come to your block party. So yeah, it's a very, it's, it's more middleweight. There's some interesting planning in regards to like timing in the dropping and um, setting things up for opponents a little bit. Um, so yeah, this one looks interesting, but it's, it's, it's Tetris in a board game, which is interesting because that's a theme this year at Essen was tes Tetris in a board game. Yes. Number 16 is Gu Gong. This is a game where you are trying, you are a rich Chinese family or a well-off Chinese family and you are attempting to gain favor with the emperor. And this game uses a interesting mechanic of every player has a hand of cards and to activate any location on the board you don't put a worker down instead you play one of your cards and the card that you play to the spot needs to be a higher value than the card that's already there and the card that's already there you gain to use in the future if the card isn't a higher value you can do some stuff to mitigate that but that's how you activate action spots the action spots themselves do things to allow you to gain victory points which are completely worthless if you don't go in a certain location enough so that you advance along a track and complete the track. You have to complete the track to get an audience with the Emperor to have any chance at all at making your points worth anything at the end of the game. So it's one of those games where like, you can do really well, but if you don't do this one thing to completion, it's worthless to you. So there's some interesting mechanics on this one. There's a lot going on on the board. Kind of reminds me of Villages or Village a little bit from that aspect. We'll see. We'll see how it does. We'll see. But that's that's my number 16. Number 15 on my list is Captains of the Gulf. This game, you own a ship vessel, boat, that's what I meant. You own a boat and you're going fishing in the Gulf of Mexico and you're trying to gain favor at ports and be rich. The winner is the person who has the most money at the end of the game. 
So what you do in the game is you take your boat and you go out and you go fishing. But you need to have cards. It uses multi-use cards to, um, you have to use the cards either as fishing permits, which allow you to fish for certain types of fish, or you use the cards to um, upgrade your boat, or you use the cards as crew members, which can give you different benefits, and you need to use the cards to actually do the fishing themselves. So it's an interesting mix of like multi-use cards with a board and like random tokens on like what fish will come out every game. It also has boats in it, which is one of Steve's like favorite things. So yeah, Captain's of the Gulf, number 15. Also, this is like a historic, we thought this building was like a cool historic, it's a nightclub. So yeah, didn't film in front of that. It's weird. Also they're in construction, so. Number 14 is Gingerbread House. This is a tile placement game where each player has, they're a witch, they have a gingerbread house. You have a grid of three by three squares and you play ginger place tiles. When you place gingerbread tiles, you gain gingerbread and then you use that gingerbread to lure various fantasy creatures to your house to capture them, to gain points. It's a game. It's kind of like Tetris Seed, but they're only like double domino style types. So yeah, gingerbread house, number 14. <laughs> Number 13 is Pandoria. In Pandoria, you are placing tiles every round, and when you place a tile, you put one of your pawns on one of the two hexes, because this is tile placement, on one of the hexes of the tile you're placing. When you place the tile, if you surround a type of tile, everyone who is around that type of tile, that good, gains that good. However, if you are on the good that's being surrounded, you get nothing, which is super interesting. So it has this thing, it's kind of like Carcassonne Farms, if you think about it in that way, where you're trying to like place tiles so that you're around a thing when it finishes, but it could be that somebody surrounds the thing you're on before the other thing gets finished. So yeah, it's an interesting tile placement game. You also can gain like bonus cards and you're completing contracts and things like that. So it's an interesting twist on tile placement with a little bit of a mix of cards. So it's Pandoria, my number 13. Number 12 is Reckholz, which is an Uwe Rosenberg title. It's Uwe's bigger title this year. Um, Steve and I are big Uwe Rosenberg fans. There's a tree trimmer over there driving. Can you see him? There he goes. Maybe. Um, but it is a game about worker placement and farming. Yay! Yeah, it kind of seems like uh, there's like action cards that are similar to like how Norseford did, but you have greenhouses and you seed stuff into greenhouses and then you collect them to complete things. There's a table that you're trying to move around and whoever's furthest around this table track thing at the end of the game wins and at the end of every round you must move along this table. So it has an interesting resource management, worker placement, but the scoring, like point, there are no points, points don't matter, it's just how far you can go around this track, which I think is interesting. He's, he's moved recently towards more conditional victories over points, which I think is an interesting direction. So that's our number 12. My number 12. Records. Number 11 is 18 Lilliput, which is an 18xx card game. So Steve and I um, are still experimenting with 18xx's, but I love train games and he enjoys them as well. And 18xx's are known for having very interesting stock manipulation games, less so necessarily on the track building. So 18 Lilliput um, pays more attention to 
Um, it uses cards and so track playing is like card based and then the stock manipulation is also a little bit more simplified So it's it promises a 45 minute to an hour 18xx experience and a card game Which is just super interesting and I feel a lot more accessible for that type of game to like get people introduced to it So yeah, that's our number 11 18 Lilliput Also, I don't know what that structure is. It's like a uh, two fishes with a bird and a cow head Steve says it looks like Xena leaning forward on a bike, and now I think I see it in the reflection of my lens, but prior I didn't see it. Do you see it? What is that? Number 10 is Architecture, and it's a tile placement game, and each player has their own deck of tiles, and you're placing them in a city for points, and each tile is worth a certain point value when you place it, and then as other people place adjacents to you, the point, your point values on the tiles that you placed previously will go up or down accordingly. So it's a tile placement game where placing tiles is important until basically they're fully surrounded, and once they're surrounded they won't adjust value anymore. So it's kind of interesting because you can like directly manipulate other people's tiles. Yeah, architecture, number something. Number nine is Valparicio, which is a merchant ship trading game with some action programming. Oh, this is us. So what you're gonna do is you select action cards and you lay them down to like program what you're doing. And then you have to, um, once everybody programs, then you all are like, okay, cool. And you reveal them. So you play action cards to do actions and you like pre-program, but let's say that you don't wanna do what you programmed to do on a turn because somebody's gonna beat you to it. So in that case, what you can do is you can pay money to do an action that you were gonna do later in the turn out of order. Vela Parisio. Amsterdam. You use your action cards in Vela Parisio to set up merchants, do trade shops, collect resources to complete shipments of contracts. Pretty straightforward shipment stuff. Oh, wow. Bakery shop. is Kiro, or Kiro, which is a two-player only game. In this game, you are semi-truck drivers, and you are in the wasteland, and you are collecting resources and goods to complete contracts. It is a real-time dice rolling game with sand timers in the semi-trucks. So on your turn, you put the timer on your truck, and that represents fuel, and you roll the dice, and you roll as much as you want, but your timer's running to gain resources, to gain cards, and things like that. And when you're done with your turn, you put your truck down. Um, if you run out of fuel, something bad happens, and you can refuel by flipping. It's silly. It's not a Tiffany game. It is 100% a Steve game, but it has really nice looking components, and it looks compelling enough that, yes, I am very interested in it as well. Plus, you should. I'm very excited to see Steve's face when we pull out the semi-truck sand timers. <laughs> so yeah, that's number eight something. Hero. I'm losing count. It's just hard to keep count when you're in this. Number seven is Fertility, which is a game that takes place um, after the flooding of the Nile, when all the fields are like fertile and stuff. It's a tile placement game. You're placing tiles on a central board, a la Domino or King Domino style, and then you use those tiles to produce merchant shops, to get goods, to uh, complete things. At the end of the game, the merchant tiles that you have on your board, if you've completed them so that they are going to produce stuff, you get points. And you want points. Can you see what's in the background? I don't know, it's just very, oh, it's it very busy. No photos inside. So there you go. Do you understand the joke I'm trying to make here? 
We walked we walked a couple blocks out of the way. I hope you get that. All right. Number seven, fertility. It's it's interesting. It's like the king domino mixed with sapiens, if you ever played sapiens. So you're placing your tiles on the main board, and then you have your own boards that are what you're using to score points. So there's a lot more player interaction than there would be with like king domino or sapien. And yeah, it's interesting. It's number seven. Number six is 1906 San Francisco. So this is a game where you are in San Francisco or you are urban developers in San Francisco after the San Francisco earthquake of 1906 and you're rebuilding the city and you get points for that. So um, it has an interesting, it uses cards slash like boards to make the rubble boards every game. So every time you play, you're gonna have a different board set up. And then the um, actions are limited in that there's action cards and you randomize those cards and you put them around the rubble city thing and that is the action spots that you have available but it's a rondelle so you always have to be moving your action selection pawn around this rondelle in order and that car wants to park <laughs> dun, dun, dun. let's just go over here canal yay so there's an action rondelle and so what you're gonna do is you randomize the action cards and you put them around the rubble pile and then on your turn you move your action pawn to the next action card in a circle. So you're gonna go around the board several times, so you're gonna learn the action rondelle, but every game the action rondelle is gonna be different. So yeah, it interests me, the theme interests me, and the action rondelle interests me, and there seems to be a lot of replayability. Maybe it's too much, I don't know, we'll find out. Also, this is my lunch. I have some regrets. Number five is Small Islands, which is another tile placement game. This one, you have ships. So you're building islands, uh, kind of like Akrotiri, where you flip tiles and you place the tile, and when you place the tile, you're like making land masses, and um, you put houses on the land masses or territories, but you can only have one like structure per thing, per player, uh, and then you can use it to complete objectives. So every player has objective cards that they're using, and they're trying to place tiles and place their monuments in such a way to complete those objectives. So yeah, there's also a ship. It's kind of a, Steve's head whipped so fast, it's off camera. But when I said there was a ship, it was like, so yeah, there you go. The river, uh, small islands, I just spoiled something, yeah. There's a cheese museum. You don't like cheese. Number four is Papering Duel, which is another two player only game. This game uses transparent cards, um, and each player has their own deck, and the cards have squares on them. So like sets, so like three of a row, um, or three of a kind in a row, either of a certain color or a certain pattern, and at the end of your turn, you say what ones you've made sets of, and your opponent has to undo your sets and make their own sets on their turn or else they lose. And that's it, that's the whole game. Uh, it's abstract strategy. It sounds really interesting, the card overlays are good, and it looks like we could play it anywhere with just a simple, like, box of cards. So yeah, papering tool. <laughs> My number, I've forgotten the numbers at this point, is... Oh. The River from Days of Wonder. Hmm. It's a worker placement resource management game, which is an interesting thing to come from Days of Wonder. Um, in this, you are building settlements along a river and you have to build your settlements as you acquire them along the river, covering up spots, but the spots that you're covering up are warehouses that can store goods or they're places that will produce goods for you. So when you cover them up with buildings or establishments, you wanna make sure that you're covering them up with buildings or establishment that let you store goods or get you resources. Because in this game, to complete things, to make buildings and things like that, you need resources and you have to pull them from warehouses that you're storing. So it's like this interesting resource management with some worker placement elements and it's Days of Wonder, so I'm excited to see what they've done. 
their last few titles have been flops for me, but this one is like right up my alley mechanic wise. So we'll see. Number two on my list is Global Twister, which is a real time puzzle game. Okay, so what you do is uh, you're tourists and there's snap shows, whatever. Every player has like a picture right in front of them and there's tiles that go with the picture. Um, so each picture is made up of nine tiles in a three by three grid and you take the tiles and you mix them up and you put them on the board and then you put another, a copy of the picture on top of it to like cover it. And then you switch your picture with another player and then you um, each have a, like a stack of cards which are programming cards and you try and you have to look at the scrambled picture and then you have to attempt to program what it is you're gonna do to like unscramble it and then that's timed and then you once somebody thinks they got it you like try it to see if you programmed it correctly to like make the picture happen which just sounds chaotically awesome to me and the pictures are really cool there's also like a beginner mode and then a, then a harder variety where it like zooms out and there's more detail and I and whatnot so yeah uh, I described it to Steve and he was like ah he, he said worse words than that but yeah that's global twister and i'm excited about it because it's so unique and different and it's like programming puzzle sliders basically yeah plus i get to make pictures of really cool places around the world how could you not steve was window shopping while i was filming and look what he found it's a pals moving castle paper model it's amazing he also stopped because the, the corgis battle him and my number one most anticipated game for us in 2018 is Futuropia. I think that's how you say it. Uh, this is by Freedom and Feast, and it's a perfect information action selection game um, where you only ever have five actions and you must use all five actions in a round, but the order in which you use them is crucial. But you're trying to make um, a perfectly self sustaining, like, condominium system. It's like bunkers, basically where um, your people don't have to work. So you start with workers, but your goal is to get it so that robots will run all the factories and engineers so that like your people don't have to work anymore. So yeah, uh, it's perfect information. It's kind of like, it's an economic resource management game, more economic than resource management, honestly. But yeah, uh, like power grid, but perfect information. I don't know, it's, it's basically Steve and I bait. I don't know if It'll be as accessible as Power Grid, but maybe, who knows? I'm interested to play it and see how it goes, and that's why it's my number one. Yeah. If you like this video, feel free to give it a thumbs up, and if you'd like to see more, make sure you subscribe. And also, have you checked out my most anticipated video from last year, but 11 months later? So I do these videos every year when we go to Essen, but what I've started doing in 2016, and I did last year, or this year for last year's games as well, was um, I look at the games that I picked, and I tell you how we think about them after that time period, and so you can watch that for last year's video and see how many of those games we still have around. And I'll do the same thing for this video later. All right, we're gonna go to a game store because it's what we do two days before us, and it's go to a game store. Thanks for watching.